What's going on guys? Nick Foy here from under30wealth.com. Today's video is going to be talking about the four major expenses of a real estate investment property that you have to consider. It's an acronym called PITI, P-I-T-I. So we're going to be going over each of those acronyms and showing you an example deal. So what it stands for, the P stands for principal. And then interest is the I. And then the first T is taxes for property taxes. And the final I is insurance. So principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. So when you've got a mortgage payment, you pay principal and interest. And then you also have property taxes and insurance on the home every single year. And then there's other expenses as well, but we're just focused on these main four as these are your four pillar expenses you have to think about when running analysis on a deal. So here we are on Zillow today. Let's go ahead and use an example deal from Indianapolis, Indiana in the Midwest. So I'm going to zoom in and just pick a random property. And then we're going to start running through the analysis. So we've got three bedrooms set up as our criteria, a house, and we want at least two bathrooms, at least a thousand square feet been up to 12 months on Zillow so all these filters are going to apply and then as an investment property let's try to find something under a hundred thousand dollars that we can buy so looking around here if we find let's say 80,000 right here let's take a look at this property so for eighty thousand dollars we could get a property with three bedrooms four baths 2,000 square feet. It's a triplex, so you're getting three units for $80,000. So let's go ahead and do some numbers here. So they're already giving you an estimated mortgage of 292. So Zillow's got their own little calculator you can quickly use. So it expects the home purchase price of 79.9. If you put 20% down, you're going to be putting down 15,980. Or if you put less than 20%, then you're going to have to take on mortgage insurance. So that's going to drive up your monthly premium and interest cost on your mortgage payment. So to make math easy today, we're just going to do 20% down. So that means you're going to be taking out a loan for the remaining balance. And that's going to be over 30 years at today's interest rates of 3.629%, which is super low. So anytime you can get under 4% by having a good credit score, that's good. So that's going to be only a monthly payment of $292. And then they estimate your property taxes and insurance to be $147. So when you combine all of that together, you're looking at about $440 for your pity for property taxes, insurance, and then the principal and interest on the mortgage. All that combined is about $440. So that's one of the nice things about Zillow. They will quickly kind of run the numbers for you to give you a quick idea of pity so now that you know that that's going to be 440 bucks a month then you've got to start factoring in uh, what kind of rent you could get for this property so if it's a triplex then you know let's say that each unit you might be able to rent out for four to five hundred dollars so the entire property if you get all three units rented out you might be collecting fifteen hundred a month in rent so from there you can subtract that 440 as your pity and that's going to leave you with just over $1,000 a month in cash flow you'll be putting away in your bank account. And then every now and then you're going to have repairs and maintenance expenses pop up that you're going to have to dig out of your bank account for those. And at the end of the year, you'll be able to look back and see how much you paid for maintenance and repairs. And you'll be able to divide that by 12 to come up with what that typical monthly amount is so that future years going forward, you've got a good idea of you know the monthly maintenance and repair expense for that home but in the initial phase you're not going to know it so you could just stick in a rough estimate if you think you know it's going to cost you 50 or 100 bucks a month to, for maintenance and repairs then you can tack that on to the 440 of the pity that we calculate so that's why pity is kind of the most important calculation to do first because those are payments that you have to make no matter what. You've got to make your principal and interest mortgage payment. You've got to pay the property taxes and you've got to pay for insurance. So those are your main pillar expenses. And then after that, it could be real variable 
you know, depending on if you're paying utilities, if you're paying for a property manager, um, different, you know, maintenance services like lawn mowing or snow plowing. So all those are going to be variable. So you're going to have to run later estimates. But to do a quick initial analysis of a property, it's good to understand what the pity is. So let's back out here and do a second deal. So here we've got one over here for 75000 It's a three bed, two bath. So this time you're only going to have one tenant renting out the entire house instead of three. So we can come down here and Zillow does have a Zestimate uh, tool where you could see, you know, potentially what you could rent for. So rent Zestimate, it's saying $800 a month, which is pretty accurate. I'd say typically you can rent about 1% of whatever the property value is. So 1% of 80,000 would be about 800 bucks a month. So that falls in line kind of with that rule of thumb. Ideally, you want to try to get 2%. So if you're able to get the purchase price down a little lower, then you could be renting out 800, 900 bucks a month. And that would be about 2% of your purchase price that you bought into the investment. So that's a good way to keep your costs down and make sure you're making a return on investment. But that's covered in another video we just did called the 2% rule. So you could check that video out. So this case, again, it spits out an estimated 285 in the mortgage. And then you can come down here and they've already estimated another 142 bucks for taxes and insurance again. So adding all that together, you know, you're a little cheaper this time. It's about $427 instead of the last house where it was $440. So you can keep playing around with this. You know, we could even get up into some higher priced homes and see what would happen. So if we were going after a $150,000 home to 200,000, so we start looking over here. So this $195,000 home, we probably could rent this out for maybe 1,600 a month, but let's go ahead and see, you know, what the Zestimate rent they're saying would be. So they think that we could rent this out for 1225. So yeah, it might be hard in Indianapolis to get 1600 a month so that's why you're better off if you've got two hundred thousand dollars to invest you're better off splitting that money up and buying you know a multi-family property or buying four or three smaller properties you know for fifty sixty thousand that way you're getting each of those properties rented out for eight hundred nine hundred bucks a month times by the three or four properties now you're collecting you know three thousand dollars a month in total rental income by buying three or four different properties rather than buying one expensive property that can only rent out for, you know, like this is saying 1200 a month. So that's why when you start scaling your business and you've got a couple hundred thousand, then you should start going after multifamily. But in the initial stages, if you've only got 50 or 60 grand, go after a little one unit property and then work your way up from there. So that's just a little advice there. But if we were going to buy this property, you know, you're going to be paying 731 a month now. So let's click on this and see they're estimating another 262 towards taxes and insurance. So when we add all that together, it's almost a thousand dollars a month. So if you're only able to rent this thing out for 1200 bucks a month, like it says right here, then you're barely breaking even, you know, you're barely positive cash flow. Cause if you take the 1225 minus your thousand dollars a month for pity, that's only going to leave you 225 bucks a month to go towards maintenance, repairs, property manager, any unexpected expenses. So that's not a real good spread there. So again, that's why I would recommend instead taking that money and you know trying to buy two or three or four different smaller homes that are down in that 40 to 50 thousand dollar range, because you could rent each of those out for 800 bucks, making your combined rents you know 3,000, 3,200 bucks a month. And then if you've got that same pity of a thousand dollars a month, you're still cash flowing two thousand dollars a month instead of cash flowing two hundred dollars a month if you would have went after a bigger home. So that's a quick video today on pity. We talked about the main four expenses you gotta factor in when you're running cash flow analysis on a rental property. So you've got property, taxes and insurance, and then you've got principal and interest if you decide to take out a mortgage on the property and all those are going to come off the rental income and whatever's left is going to be your cash flow that you're earning each month on the property and then occasionally you're going to have other expenses snow plowing lawn mowing property managers 
Uh, and then any miscellaneous repairs that you got to do to the property, you know, if there's a leak or something in the plumbing that needs fixed, something in the septic system that needs repaired, you might have some out of pocket repairs here and there. So you should also budget, you know, a monthly amount towards repairs and maintenance, whether that's 50 bucks, 100 bucks, you know, you'll have to decide based on your analysis of how much you think it'll be in your local market. So thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button. We upload every single day. This was episode number 21. I will see you guys tomorrow for episode number 22.